Hello friends, this video on solutions part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about solubility now. We know that likes dissolve like. For example, if you take NaCl, the common salt we use, and put this in water, you will see that it dissolves. Correct? Instead of NaCl, even if you take sugar, it dissolves. But in the water, so again the water here, you try to add oil, any oil, mustard oil, refined oil, any kind of oil, and try to stir it. Even after stirring, you'll see that it won't dissolve. Have you ever wondered why salt or sugar dissolves in water but not the oil? That is because of the fact that like dissolves like. Right? Polar solute dissolves in polar solute. So, if, for example, uh, if you take, uh, as I told, sodium chloride, sugar dissolves in water. But if you take uh, anthracene, it won't dissolve in water. You take naphthalene, naphthalene balls, it won't dissolve in water. But instead of water, if you take benzene here, so let's suppose you take some benzene in this solution. So in this benzene, if you try to dissolve anthracene, dissolves. You try to dissolve naphthalene, it dissolves. Correct? But again, in the same benzene, if you try to dissolve sodium chloride, it won't dissolve. If you try to dissolve uh, sugar, it won't dissolve. Correct? So, like dissolves like. This is something she already knows, so we won't uh, cover much on this. But the only point I'm trying to convey from this slide is, it is not that all the solutes dissolve in all the solvent, right? The solubility is different. Some sol some solutes dissolve easily. Some solute dissolves uh, by stirring or heating, or some solid doesn't as well dissolve in the solvent. So there has to be a definition for solubility, correct? So the definition of solubility is solubility of substance is the maximum amount of the, the maximum amount that can be dissolved in a specified amount of solvent. That is the solubility of the substance. And this solubility depends on temperature, pressure and structure. So we'll see each of these one by one. So let's start with temperature. So if you see, you take some water and add some maybe sugar crystals, add a little more sugar crystals and then you stir it. You will see that some of the sugar gets dissolved but some of them are still there. Correct? But now if you heat it, if you heat it and again stir it, you will see that some more are dissolved. That means heating plays an important role in solubility. Right? Because the sugar crystals were not getting dissolved by stirring, but when we heat the water a little bit, then the sugar molecule got dissolved. Still one is left. Right? So temperature plays a role in this scenario. The next is pressure. A good example is the Coca-Cola. The moment you open Coca-Cola bottle, you'll see all these bubbles. Right? Why these bubbles? These bubbles are nothing but carbon dioxide. So what happens is the Coca-Cola bottle or any soda bottle is packed at a high pressure. Packed at high pressure. See it is all sealed. It's packed at high pressure. And when it's packed at high pressure, we'll see that the solubility increases with the pressure. We'll see in the next few slides. That time carbon dioxide is dissolved. But the moment it is open, the pressure is reduced to normal atmospheric pressure, right? See, if it is closed, it has high pressure. The moment you open the lid, the pressure becomes atmospheric pressure. Pressure decreases and thus the dissolved carbon dioxide comes out. 
that means the solubility also depends on the pressure we will touch upon these a lot when we talk about henry's law and rolle's law uh, just understand this here the the soda bottle when it is packed it is packed at a high pressure at that time the carbon dioxide is dissolved in this the solubility of carbon dioxide the solubility of gas and liquids actually increase with increase in pressure that is something we'll discuss now when the pressure is decreased when you open it the carbon dioxide comes that means here if you see the moment i have opened this the pressure is changing and uh, the dissolved carbon dioxide is coming out that means the solubility also depends on the pressure the next is the structure as i told see this sodium chloride was dissolved in water but we are not able to dissolve oil in water because the structure is different thus we have seen likes dissolve likes correct polar dissolves polar non polar dissolves non polar in this chapter we'll be focusing on solubility of solution which is liquid that is liquid solution where my solvent is liquid so even when the solvent is liquid uh, the solution will also be liquid so i'll be will be discussing more of the solubility for liquid solution correct so in case of liquid solution i can have uh solubility i can discuss about the solubility of solids and liquids when i have solute as solid or i can discuss about solubility of gas and liquid when i have solute as so my solute is gas this is also my solute or i can discuss about solubility of liquids and liquids so we'll be talking about these three uh, scenarios this is solute yeah. so where the solute is solid solute is liquid solute is gas in all these case my solvent is liquid so we'll talk about the solubility in these scenarios so let's take the scenario for solubility of solid in liquid so every solid will not dissolve in a example i have a liquid i'm discuss this also i have told you about benzene and water example i have benzene and water and i have these sugar and naphthalene so you see that sugar will dissolve in water yes but sugar will not dissolve in benzene similarly naphthalene will dissolve in benzene but naphthalene will not dissolve in Why? Because we have told that like this all slide. So this is how it will happen. To understand the solubility, let's understand dissolution and crystallization. It's a new term we are introducing: dissolution and crystallization. So what is dissolution? See, when a solid solute is added to a solvent, some solute dissolves and its concentration increase in the solution. this process is called dissolution i'll show you the diagram example i have my solution here right this is water water is my solvent here this is my solvent and in this solvent i'm adding some solutes these are my solutes maybe sugar crystals now what happens is when you stir it you see that after some time this solute will dissolve correct if you see the solute goes off correct let me show you once again the solute will go off correct so this process is called dissolution so the other process is called crystallization in crystallization what happens is so the solute particles which are dissolved in this solution collide and when they collide they get separated out of the solution for example this is a solution this is my solution which has some solute dissolved so one of all the solutes inside this which is not visible now will collide and they will separate out this process is called crystallization 
So at a point of time, a stage is reached when these two processes occur at the same rate. And this is called equilibrium condition. So if you see here, both this process is happening together, right? Some of the solutes are getting dissolved. That is called dissolution. Some of the solutes are coming out of the solution. That is called crystallization. And this is the equilibrium condition. Correct? So under this condition, number of solutes going into the solution is equal to number of solutes coming out of the solution. So I can write here that my solute plus solvent will give me a solution equilibrium. And please note, in, in this case, in this uh, equilibrium condition, the concentration of solute in the solution will remain same at a given temperature and pressure. Why it will remain same? Because the amount of solute coming out is equal to amount of solute going in. So hope you understand what is dissolution. So you dissolution the word say dissolve right. So you have dissolution the word is similar to word dissolve. You have solute particles you dissolve in a solvent the solid is totally dissolved and the concentration of solution increase that is called dissolution. The reverse process is called crystallization. You have a solution it has solute already dissolved in it. Some of the solute particles collide and the solute particles come out of the solution. This process is called crystallization. So in equilibrium condition both these happen together. So let me introduce a new term saturated and unsaturated solution. So what is a saturated solution? See solution in which no more solute can be dissolved at same temperature and pressure is called saturated solution. So you take a glass of water, you, you keep adding salt, you will see that the salt which you add it dissolves on its own. After some time if you add more and more salt you will see that at that particular temperature and pressure that is your STB the more and more salt which you are adding is not getting dissolved in the solution that time you will say that that particular glass of solution has become saturated at that temperature and pressure for example I will take the glass of water let's suppose and in this this is the water you keep adding an ACL right you will see that the NaCl gets dissolved and after some time you still keep adding NaCl you will see that it will not get dissolved. That means that such a solution has become saturated at a given temperature and pressure. We have seen that if you heat this uh, solution again more and more solids can be dissolved. So when you talk about the saturated solution you have to specify temperature and pressure. Correct? In this saturated solution, the solution is an equilibrium with solute. We will show you that. So it, it contains the max amount of solute that can be dissolved in a given solute. And that's why the concentration of solute in saturated solution is its solubility. See, and the unsaturated solution, the definition is just reverse. Unsaturated solution is a solution in which more solute can be dissolved. And obviously when you talk about saturation and unsaturation, you talk about same temperature and pressure. Correct. So saturated solution, you can't dissolve more solute at uh, given temperature and pressure. Correct. So at this uh, stage, you will see that the solute and the solvent are in equilibrium. If you see here, two particles are going from uh, solution to the vapor phase and two particles are coming in. This is a perfect example of a saturated solution. So in this case, if you see the solution is in equilibrium with solute. The red one is my solute particles and I am assuming there are more solute particles but the one which is taking part in this equilibrium reaction, I am showing it. 
correct so saturated solution is the solution where no more solute can be dissolved at the given temperature and pressure and in a, when the solution is saturated the solution is in equilibrium with solute and when the solution is saturated it contains the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in a solute and thus we can say that the concentration of solute in saturated solution is nothing but its solubility now we'll talk about the effect of temperature so as i told the solubility is depend on temperature pressure and the nature of the component so first is we'll talk about the effect of temperature on solubility so in that case it follows lee chatelier principle so as per lee chatelier principle if the dissolution process is endothermic i told what is dissolution process just now i explained if my dissolution process is endothermic that is heat is required heat is required to dissolve so in that case delta h solution is greater than 0 correct so in that case the solubility will increase with increase in temperature so i can say that in that case solubility will be directly proportional to temperature you increase the temperature solubility will increase why because the dissolution process is endothermic for example dissolution of water sorry dissolution of uh, sugar in water it is endothermic process so you see that this the sugar molecules are not getting dissolved you heat it sugar molecules get dissolved easily correct okay? and vice versa so if my dissolution process is exothermic that is when heat is uh, emitted that is my delta h solution is less than 0 so i can say that solubility is inversely proportional to temperature you increase the temperature solubility actually decreases and this has been proven experimentally this is for solubility of solids in liquid and it is impacted by temperature right it has an impact of temperature the next is solubility of solids in liquid but again we are talking about the pressure effect so in this case the pressure effect there is no significant effect why no significant effect any guess see pressure solids and liquids are incompressible solids and liquids are highly incompressible they are highly incompressible so if they are highly incompressible they'll have almost zero effect of pressure so if they'll have very almost zero effect of pressure they'll not have any or very low impact on solubility by changing the pressure correct why hope you understand solids and liquid but if i talk about gas and liquids in that case will have effect of pressure because gas is hardly impacted by pressure but solids and liquids are highly incompressible so in that case a uh, solubility of solids in liquid will not have much impact due to pressure thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again